Today we're going to be taking a look at Prezi, and I mentioned in my last uh, weekly uh, information that uh, Prezi is just kind of a nice tool to use. Um, it's very inexpensive or even free for educators, and it's similar to PowerPoint in that you can create presentations, um, but it's different in that it's less linear. You can do a lot of things with uh, Prezi that you can't do with PowerPoint, um, integrate a lot of multimedia in there. Um, and then you just don't have to go in a straight line like you do with PowerPoint. So it's a nice tool to be able to use uh, both for you and your students. So today we're going to be taking a look at just the basics of Prezi as far as how to get it started up and, and kind of getting into the very beginnings of it. And we'll continue in a few other videos in the future on some of the basics on how you would create a good beginning Prezi for use in your class or if you're a student for use, uh, an assignment you might have. Uh, I'm going to take a look at Prezi.com here, and you can see this is the uh, home page for Prezi. And you can learn more about it. You can explore some of the Prezi's that are out there. You can log in, look at pricing, uh, look at some of the features that are down here if you want to. You can play a little intro video if you choose to. Um, but let's take a look at how we get signed up for Prezi if you don't have an account. And go here to sign up, and it'll give you a couple of, of ways you can sign up with Prezi. The first is public which is zero uh, dollars per year. Uh, you only get the core features and you get about 100 megabytes of storage space. So 100 megabytes can be taken up pretty quickly. Um, if you have pictures or other things within your Prezi, it doesn't take too long to, with a, several of those to reach your 100 megabyte limit. If you go up to uh, 492 per month, then you can get the core features, you get 500 megabytes of storage. You can make your Prezi private, so you can see in here, uh, with this free one, all your presses will be public, so you can find ones that other people have done if they're useful in your class, or you can, uh, if you create one yourself, you have to be aware that the public could find those also. Um, but if you have the next price up, you can also get uh, the private, you can make those private, you can use your own logo, and you can get premium support. Then you can go up to Pro, which has four times the storage, you can have them private, you can get your own logo, premium support, and you also get Prezi Desktop. The thing to keep in mind, though, is if you're a student or a teacher, they have an EDU site down here. You can click on, click on that, and you can see now for free, you're basically getting what would have cost $5 before. So you get the 500 megabytes of storage, so you get a, a bit more storage, which is nice. You can make those private and use your own logo. And then if you want to go up and you use Prezi a lot in your classes, then you can use the Edu Pro, which is $5 per month, and you get it free for 30 days. And then you get, uh, like I said, four times the storage, so up to two gigabytes. You can make them private, use your own logo, you get premium support. And then you get the Prezi desktop for offline editing, which is nice if you don't want to be online whenever you want to edit those. So if you are in transit a bit or you don't uh, aren't always within a reach of a, a hot spot and with your laptop, you can still go in there and edit those offline. So if you wanted to go through it and start with this process, what you would do is start now. And you'll see it's going to ask you for an email. And in my last weekly suggestion, I told you a little bit about these. Um, if you're in a situation like this where putting in your EDU address, your education, uh, whatever your school email address is, gives you actually more functionality for free. It makes sense to use that. However, um, there's a lot of tools out there that are really nice for education now or, or nice in general use, but they require you to have an email address on file to set up an account, even if it's free. Uh, that's kind of how a lot of these places have the ability to, to hook you into whatever content you're storing in there. Uh, I personally have an email address that I use for a lot of the items that's completely separate than my educational accounts. Uh, I've never uh, been spammed or have a whole lot of, of junk mail coming in from, from sites such as Prezi or those, those type. But there are a lot of them that are out there. Um, just off the top of my head, I can think of Jing and Screencast and Glogster, SurveyMonkey, Prezi, QuizMaker. There's a lot that have free offers if you have an account set up, but it takes that email address. So it may be worth starting a Gmail, a Hotmail, or Yahoo account, or something like that if you don't already have one, uh, so you can keep your uh, account email separate from all your other ones. Uh, but in this case, if you wanted to take advantage of this, you have to put in your email address. Um, which I did, and then what it will do is send you a confirmation email there with a link that within a couple days you can go in and set up your account. So this is what it will look like if you go into register it. You got your first name. You put that in. 
It's already got my email address in there as my username. It's got a place for my password, so I'll type those in a minute. But you can see that they give you some information here about what you get with the education account for free. You can create Prezi's from any computer online, download finished Prezi's and present offline, which is nice. Choose if a Prezi is private or published to everyone. Display your own logo at the bottom right hand corner of your Prezi and you can get 500 megabytes of storage. It tells you the limitations though are that an education use of logo appears within the software it loads and you can only create Prezi's online. So you don't have some of those functionalities that you would have if you went ahead and paid for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my password here. I'm going to agree to the terms of use and go ahead and register and continue. And here I am. Now I got my profile up here. I can create my profile if I want to. It's got my Prezi's which is where your other ones would appear if you have those, uh, which of course I don't have any right now. And then you got some popular ones out here if you want to take a look at some of the ones that are out there. You can go down to explore, find more about that. But if you're going to start off, then you'd be going to a new Prezi. You'll see that you'll give a place where you can have it a title. So this is just... something here for the description. And go on. With the process of creating that. And now you can see that there's a lot of different templates you can choose from. You can create one on your own or you can choose one of these many templates that come pre-made and that's certainly one of the easiest ways you can just get started with Prezi's. Picking one of those, and then it'll give you the opportunity to go through and change the information that's in there. It's already got the path set, um, so it makes it much easier to get started. Or you can click here, and you can create a blank one. Just go from scratch yourself. I'm just going to go down here to one of these, and we'll just take a look at how this might look to begin with. So I'm going to click on that one, go start editing. And you'll see it'll come up here. We have some options up here about printing, exiting, saving. We're going to have this that we'll take a look at next time, which is kind of our the brains of the operation, how things go, where you can go to insert different items, files, YouTube videos, PowerPoints, images. You've got shapes you can choose from to put into the Prezi. You can go back out, look at the path show you where things are going to go when you actually play it. So it'll go from this pic large picture here to number two, to number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finish right there. Look at the themes. If you want to look at some of the different colors and go from there. So what you'll have is down the side as we start getting this taken care of, we'll have a lot of different information that shows up. So you can go from piece to piece as you're editing or looking at those. And then at the end, when you're ready to play, you can do this slideshow up here. I'll just kind of show you a little bit of how it looks like. Of course, we don't have any content in here. As we go forward, this is kind of the general path that's going to follow as we put that information in. As you can see, that's kind of how it's going to look. And we can change that if we choose to. So, And then if we want to exit it, we'll just put ESC, and we're done. So we'll take a look at more information in the future. But this is just some basic information on how you can get in and get started with Prezi. And we'll pick this up next time.